Hey everybody, it's Kathy, and in today's video I want to share 25 Amazon must-haves for weight loss success. These are some of my favorite kitchen tools and gadgets that I have been using to so far lose 11 pounds. I'm on a 50 pound weight loss journey and if you would like to follow along, click the subscribe button and I will link my weight loss playlist here and you can go watch my last episode. I have an Amazon page for both the US and for Canada. I will link them in the description box and in the first pinned comment. I will also put links to everything below in the pinned comment in the order that I share them. If you live outside of Canada and the US, I believe if you click on the US link, it somehow goes to your country. So you might be able to find the product there if you are interested. So the very first thing I wanna talk about are my glass food containers. I have different sizes. I have this one by Pyrex, it's one cup size. This is one that I use a lot. It has uh, the airproof lid. And I like this one for leftovers. I also like it on grocery day. I get myself a quart of blueberries and a thing of raspberries. I'll wash them, I'll mix them together. I'll just drizzle a tiny, tiny amount of maple syrup on it. And then it lasts me for about a week. And this is what I have for breakfast every morning. I have Greek yogurt with my berries, which are low in the glycemic index and blueberries are great loaded with antioxidants. And I'll just sprinkle a little bit of granola on top. And that keeps me full until about noon hour when it's time for lunch. And I also have a rectangular version of the, um, airlock containers. So I have a few different ones linked in my Amazon weight loss store that you can check out. Now I use these more whenever I was following Weight Watchers, but I still reach for them just in case, you know, my eyeball measuring is off and I just want to check and make sure that I'm not overeating. And I'm talking about my stackable stainless steel measuring cups. I love these. They go from one cup, a half a cup, and I do use them, say, if I'm having rice and I just want to make sure that I'm only getting one serving. I can eyeball it because, you know, I've been a, a professional weight, weight loss loser, is that what you call it, uh, for most of my life. So, you know, just by looking at things, I can be pretty accurate. But if I just want to double check, I like having the measuring cups. They can go in the dishwasher. Uh, they're great quality. And I also have my handy stainless steel measuring spoons that nest together. These particular ones, I just kept them on their uh, the key ring so they don't get lost. These come in handy as well. This is my food scale and I like that it is adjustable. Um, you know, it can do metric or imperial. It's handy to have because a trick that the dietitian told me is nothing really is off limits, but you just have to be mindful of things and not have them every day. But say if you want to have a treat once a week of maybe some potato chips, instead of taking the whole bag with you to eat, just measure them using your kitchen scale, put them in little baggies. And then once, you know, that baggie is gone, that's all you can eat. So if you're somebody, you know, that still needs a snack to feel satisfied and on track, that's just a little tip that uh, might help you out. I cannot live without my digital meat thermometer. I use this like almost on a daily basis. Originally, I bought it for whenever I barbecue. It does both Celsius and Fahrenheit. And right now it says that my kitchen is 85 degrees Fahrenheit. That seems awfully warm. However, even when I'm cooking chicken in the oven, I'll, you know, stick the probe in, put it in the, mo the thickest part in the middle because you want to make sure that your chicken is thoroughly cooked. And whenever it says 165 degrees, I know it's ready. Love this. Like I said, you can use it for the barbecue, use it for stuff cooked in the oven. It comes in really handy. Another thing that is very helpful when you're trying to lose weight are baking pans. And I use these because I do a lot of sheet pan meals, especially in the colder weather. And I have a video for chicken fajita meal that I will link here. It is so easy. I'll prepare the stuff in the morning, let it marinate all afternoon, and then I will 
uh, put everything on my baking sheet. Now I do like to line them with uh, aluminum foil just to make cleanup easier but they are so good. I also have a recipe for Weight Watchers. I think it was chicken, broccoli, and potatoes, a sheet pan meal. That is also good, and I will link my recipe playlist below. I have a few recipes on there. I might try and add a few more during the winter. I also love this handy little oil sprayer, and I actually filled it with avocado oil because sometimes instead of just using olive oil right out of the bottle, I prefer to use the sprayer because I know then that I'm really using less oil. And you know, I'll just take my chicken breasts, if they're frozen or partially frozen, I'll spritz them with some oil, put some salt and pepper on them, maybe a little bit of Italian seasoning, put them in the fridge until it's time for dinner, and then I'll pop them in the oven on one of my baking sheets and check with my meat thermometer whenever they're ready and this has come in so handy and i really do like the taste of avocado oil as well so this next one is fairly new and i wish that i would have bought it a lot sooner and it's a handy little food chopper now it does come with several different chopping attachments but so far I have only used this one and it is for onions. Now I, mean, I will tell you, you have to be very careful. This thing is very sharp, but it has this little button here to lock this in place. And this just pops out very easily so you can clean it or if you want to exchange um, a different type of a cutting head, I believe it spiralizes vegetables. I usually mainly just use it for chopping onions because that way you know it's quick and they're all uniform and I don't cry when I'm chopping them. I will tell you I do cut the onion in half and I'll lay it there but it does take quite a lot of um, effort on my part you know to push down and get the onions all chopped. So you might get a bicep workout using this but just be careful like I said it's very sharp and then you just uh, have your onion or whatever it is you're chopping in here. I believe it can go in the dishwasher, but I prefer to do it by hand because I don't like how plastics can get kind of ratty looking if you put them through the dishwasher too many times. You can never have enough stainless steel mixing bowls, and I have several different sizes. My larger one is actually in the dishwasher, but these come in great whenever I'm making my sheet pan meals. I just put everything in here, and then, you know, whatever mixture uh, I put on the food can just use some tongs or some big spoons and then I'll just cover it with saran wrap. Or if you have one of those plastic covers, you can put it on while it's in the fridge marinating and they're so easy to clean. You know, you don't have to worry about um, chicken juice, you know, and salmonella poisoning. Stainless steel is such a great bowl to have in the kitchen. Number 10, I'm so excited. My honey crisp apples should be in season in the coming week. They are my favorite type of apples and I try and have one a day and I love my little apple slicer. So I wash my apple, I'll put it on a cutting board or on a plate and then I'll just push down. Again, you have to use, you know, some strength from your upper body, but it slices the apple into, you know, nice quarter size pieces and in the middle, it takes the core out. This is a handy gadget to have and oh gosh I've had this forever and I absolutely love it. And I'll tell you what I put on my apple just that the only time I ever use salt is when I'm making chocolate chip cookies which I haven't made in a couple of years now but whenever I eat an apple or an orange I just put the tiniest amount of salt on top of them and I don't know what it is, but it's just, it brings out the flavor of the fruit. I'm not really a person that likes the taste of salt, but I have to have them when I'm having an apple or an orange for whatever reason. So try that and let me know what you think. The next item that is very helpful when you're trying to lose weight is a good bathroom scale. And I have this one. And what I've been doing lately is I will weigh myself every morning whenever I get up. And sometimes I'll even weigh myself at night. Now don't worry, I'm not obsessing about my weight, but I'm just, whenever I look at the number and I see it going down, it just kind of motivates me to stay on track that day for my eating. And if I also see that my weight's just staying the same, or maybe it's up, you know, a little bit, then I'll say, oh, okay, I have to be a lot better, maybe cut back on my portion sizes. Because I'm using the balanced plate approach to losing weight, 
where half of the plate is vegetables, a quarter is protein, and then uh, the other quarter is like high fiber complex carbs. It's working for me. You know, like I said, I've lost 11 pounds and I'm just finally so happy to not have to, you know, count points or calories. I'm just still trying to wrap my head around this new way of eating. I was skeptical at first. I meet with a dietitian every six to eight weeks and she's giving me lots of recipes and food ideas. So I really do like this um, method and like I said it's working for me so if you want to check out my weight loss videos you can go check out my playlist. Something I also recommend doing is when you're trying to lose weight is taking your body measurements. So I have this cloth tape. I try and do my measurements at least once a month and I'll do my bust waist hips i'll do my thighs and my calves and i'll also do my biceps and my neck because even though the scale may not be budging i can tell when my clothes are like feeling a little looser or i'll look in the mirror and i don't look as bloated so it's really handy to have another i guess method of keeping track of your goal because even if the scale say doesn't move a lot that month maybe i lost an inch or two so that also is very motivating and helps to keep me on track with my weight loss i also found this handy food and water tracker and it's just a tear off sheet and i think i'm going to order it because i can put that on my fridge it just reminds me you know drink my water every day uh, did i eat all my veggies it's kind of like tracking but not really i think it's just maybe Maybe if you need that motivation, it's a good tool to have. But it, maybe instead of that, you might just want to keep track of like your measurements, your weight in just like a blank notebook. That's what I do every month. I, the first of the month, I'll take my measurements, put my weight down and then track it. Or I even keep it on my phone because then it's handy, you know, as I'm losing weight and I'm online shopping, I have my measurements and, you know, in case my sizing changes. And something that I want to begin doing is lifting weights. So I also will, you know, keep track of my reps. And um, then as, you know, I've been doing it for a couple of weeks, I can maybe add a few more sets on. So it's really great, I think, to write things down because I know for myself, if I just put it in my phone or if I'm just keeping it up here, I'm not going to remember. So that's why I'm still kind of old school that way and I like things actually written down. I use my slow cooker a lot in the fall and the winter time and sometimes even in the summer when it's way too hot to put the oven on. And a slow cooker can be your friend for meal prep if you want to make big batches of say a chili or a soup or a stew and you want to freeze it or just have a few meals of head. This is something I need to work on this fall and it is meal prepping because that I believe is key because for me because I'm an emotional eater I find if I don't have my food plan and out for the day that's when you know the car can go off the highway and you know we're going through drive throughs and places we shouldn't be going so I know breakfast for me for the last five years I eat the same thing I'm not really excited by food I just eat the wrong want the wrong food like high fat high sugar so that's kind of my pain point and what I'm working on. But you know, I could eat probably soup every day for three days and it wouldn't bother me. So I'm going to try and get better, do my meal prep with my slow cooker, put my food in my glass containers, freeze them, keep them in the fridge. And then, you know, that morning, just take it out. And then by the time it's lunchtime, it'll be thawed out and I can just pop it in the microwave. So preparation is key when losing weight. And yeah, I definitely need to work on that one. The next thing that is really important is to drink your water. And I have a couple different water, uh, reusable water containers that I like. I like this one. Uh, it has a just pop off top. I think this is either an 18 or 20 ounce Yeti. I'll drink, I drink about two to three liters of water every day so I'll drink several of these and this is nice because say if you want to put your coffee in it it has like a you know the little spout thing there I do wish I would have bought one with a straw so I'm going to look and see if I can just buy a different top with a straw and use that I also have a swell water bottle which is nice uh, you know if I'm going for a walk it's not quite as cumbersome because it's a little thinner to hold some of them have loops on them that if you're exercising you can just hold it by the loop and it's important to take water with you when you're working out especially when it's hot out plus using reusable water containers 
containers are much better for the environment and your pocketbook so you're not buying bottled water all the time. The next thing that I think is really important for weight loss is having some sort of resistance bands or some weights. I do have weights. I have one, three, and five pound weights. But I think I'm going to buy myself a resistance band. I was actually just looking at them on Amazon and I found one that I liked because it's great. You know, my gym is downstairs in the basement. Like I have a treadmill. Um, I have my weights down there. But for me, I have to see it in order to use it. So I was thinking if I had resistance band, I could have it, you know, somewhere in a cupboard in the kitchen. And then I could take 15 minutes in the morning and just, you know, do some kind of arm exercises just to build some muscle in my upper body body because that's so important for women especially as we age so I think resistance bands I don't know they may not be as good as you know actually lifting weights but I think it's better than nothing and the next thing I have a collection of exercise DVDs and some of my favorite are the Leslie San Sansong walk away the pounds now, I don't know what happened to Leslie. I haven't seen her since before COVID. Um, they seem to have different, you know, group leaders now on their walks. Does anybody know what happened to Leslie? Maybe she just retired. I also like Kathy Smith. When I was a teenager, I used to have that Jane Fonda, oh, you know, that famous cassette tape. Uh, I forget the workout, what it was called. But, you know, I, it's handy to have, I find, like a DVD because it's almost like you're working out with a friend. I know there's all kinds of exercise videos on YouTube. Uh, you can, you know, stream them on your computer. So there's, you know, there's lots of different ways that you can find somebody on online to work out with. And the next item that I have to recommend, something that helps me when I wear it, and I, I got a new iPhone, so I need help to hook up my old Apple Watch. I tried yesterday and I can't get it to pair, so my daughter's gonna have to help me figure it out. But I find when I wear my Apple Watch, I make healthier choices. Now, you don't have to have an Apple Watch. You could have a Fitbit or any sort of a movement tracker, something that keeps track of your steps. Now, I am not setting lofty goals right off the start because I know myself and I know, you know, I'm setting myself up for failure. If I say, Kathy, you gotta walk 10,000 steps every day. Well, you can't just go from couch potato to 10,000 steps a day or that's not going to last too long. So I'm going to set attainable goals and I'm not focusing so much on the steps right now. It's just the movement. So what my goal had is, is to walk for 15 minutes a day, three times a week. Now that's very doable. If I leave my house and walk seven and a half minutes, if I want to come home there, I have 15 minutes. So that's probably just a walk around the block. So for somebody, you know, that basically hasn't worked out in years, I think that's a very valid starting point and something that can easily be obtained. And it's not like I'm saying I have to do it every day. I feel because I can do 15 minutes a day, like even if I have to break it up into five minute segments, that that's something that I'll probably end up doing more than three times a day. So just, you know, little tricks like that with your mind can be very, very motivating. And I find whenever I'm wearing my Apple Watch and I look at it and it says, oh, you've only done a hundred steps today. It's like, that's not good. Let's try and get to, you know, a thousand or 2000 steps a day and eventually work our way up. Another thing that's good about the Apple Watch, I'm not sure how it works for other trackers, is that you can set reminders that I think every hour, every so often, however long you set it for, it will automatically beep and tell you, you've been sitting too long, get up and, you know, walk around a bit. So that's another motivator that you can uh, find on these trackers. Another thing that maybe you haven't thought about is it's really important to keep your skin moisturized, especially if you're losing a lot of weight and you want like your skin to uh, maybe firm up and get tight and you know maybe work a little bit on cellulite. I don't know like what the secret is to losing a lot of weight and not having loose skin but I have been reading that if you lose weight slowly if you drink a lot of water you know maybe dry brushing helps. I like this moisturizer. I got it off of Amazon. It's Alpha Skincare and it has I think glycolic 
acid in it. Yes, 12% glycolic acid. And it just does the same thing for our body skin as it does for our face. So it just like gets rid of any dead skin that is sitting on your body and it, you know, brings out the healthy cells and your skin's going to look rejuvenated and glowing. So sometimes, you know, we often overlook the largest organ of our body. That is our skin. And especially if we're outdoors and it's hot and dry and all the pollutants, it's really important to remember, you know, to moisturize your skin. And of course, wear your sunscreen when you're outside. So the next thing that I recommend having is a Vitamix a blender or a Nutri blender. You can see my Vitamix, it's sitting on my counter. It had been sitting in my pantry, but for me, it's really important right now that I see it. And I've been using that thing quite a lot during the week. Sometimes I just don't feel like having a meal, I'm too tired or whatever. So what I've been doing is making myself a smoothie. So I need to get more protein in. One of the ways I do that is by using Greek yogurt. Now you can use plain Greek yogurt or you can do what I do and use vanilla Greek yogurt. I don't like the taste of plain. I've tried it with vanilla. Uh, I just, you know what, I'm just going to make myself happy. I have to be happy eating what I'm eating. I'm not going to be miserable because this is a new way of life. It's This isn't a diet. It's healthy living. So I'll put about a cup of my Greek yogurt in my Vitamix. Then I'll put about five ice cubes. Put about a half a cup of mixed berries like blueberries, strawberries, blackberries and raspberries. I buy them frozen from Walmart. You can get them in a bag and I just pop them in frozen. And then I'll put in maybe a small size banana or a bit of frozen avocado, which you can also buy at Walmart in the freezer section. And then I'll put in maybe two to three tablespoons of just rolled oats for some extra fiber. Blend that up for about a minute and it's really good. It's healthy and it really satisfies me. And I'm glad that I ate it because then I'm not having those hunger pains at eight o'clock at night when I'm bored, you know, and thinking, oh, I should have something to eat. So even if you don't want to have a Vitamix, you know, you can buy like a blender. I've linked a few below. They're pretty economical. They just, you know, are for shakes or smoothies. The other thing I want to tell you about the Vitamix is that you can actually make soup in it. So I'm going to make some soup this winter. I want to try and maybe make some asparagus soup or some mushroom soup because, you know, soup can be very filling and especially if I I can control the ingredients going into it, it should also be very healthy. Now, we have to remember that whenever we eat, we eat with our eyes. So we have to make our food look really great and interesting and also tasting great, right? To We just don't want to eat a dried up old chicken breast. So spices are very important. So I like to put everything bagel on my boiled eggs because I don't really love eggs. Like I will eat them, but they're not like my first thing of choice, but they're a great way to get protein in. And I actually bought this on Amazon and it really spices up the eggs, you know, and I don't mind eating them. Another thing that I've been using is Clubhouse Live grill. This is the Montreal steak. I have four of these. You can buy them with low salt or no salt. You can also buy them for chicken. So sometimes I'll also even just cook a steak in the oven. I'll just drizzle it with a little bit of olive oil or I will use my sprayer with my avocado oil. Just put a little bit of uh, coarse salt, some pepper, and then sprinkle this on both sides. Cook it in the oven at 350 for about 40 minutes. Check it with my meat thermometer and oh my goodness, it is so delicious and moist. It's really, really awesome. So it's really important to remember when you're cooking, when you're losing weight, make your food taste really good. You don't have to stick to just the bland old foods. Use some spices to spice up your food. It's going to keep you satisfied and on track. Now, I just said that we eat with our eyes. So I feel it's also very important to treat ourselves and have some nice uh, plates and bowls to eat off of. I bought these on Amazon. I have a set of six. They're all different colors and designs. And what I use these for are snacks. So at night, sometimes I'll have some almonds. 
So I'll put my almonds in there. Rather, it just looks better than say on a napkin. I don't take the bag down with me. I always portion my stuff out because I feel if I took like a bag of almonds, I'd probably eat way too many. So I'll just figure out the serving size. I have about 10 to 15 almonds and I'll have like a cheese stick with it. But if I present it to myself like this, I feel like it's a special time and I'm becoming mindful of what I'm eating. It's just little tricks like that. I also have larger bowls that I'll uh, use say if I'm having a salad and I'll just make like a green salad and put some olive oil and red red wine vinegar on it and uh, some chicken and it just it looks nicer in a nice colorful bowl and they're pretty reasonably priced on Amazon. So if you think that you want to start exercising and get moving I have found some pretty affordable clothing exercise clothing items on Amazon. I have bought these in the past and used them. They have some great exercise tops. I have linked some from just my size that are sleeveless and short sleeve. I like the sleeveless. I don't care if I have flabby upper arms. Nobody's going to see me in my basement. Even if I was out walking in the heat, I really wouldn't care anyways. I just can't stand to be hot. But uh, I have used this brand and they do wash and wear quite well. I also have found some Amazon Basics joggers that I will link below. Uh, they're reasonably priced. Again, perfect, you know, for walking out in the fall or if you're walking on your treadmill. Some of the Amazon Basic clothing products are quite nice. And this is my favorite running shoe. Well, it's a walking shoe. I have wide flat feet. I'm a size 10 and I can't wear Nike. I do like New Balance, but I have found the one that fits the most comfortable for me, gives me the most support around the ankles is Saucony. I love these. You can get white, black, you can get all different colors. It's kind of fun to have colorful running shoes because it just, I don't know, if I look down and if I have pink shoes on, it makes me happy. And you know, I feel like I'm doing something special for me rather than just wearing, you know, the standard old running shoe that everybody wears. So I hope that you found my video helpful and informative. And if you have not watched my emotional eating video, I will link it here as well as my weight loss check-in videos. You can go check up on those. Thanks for watching. Bye.